Hi, it's Gary. Welcome to today's video. Today, it's part one of a little mini series I'm going to be doing looking at my latest order from Colt Pens. Today, we're going to take a look at the inks. They're all from Dominant Industry. We've got Lake, Forest, Lungo, and Winter Wood. So join me now down on the mat. We'll take a look at the inks, look at some swatch cards, some colour comparisons, and we'll do some writing samples with these inks. Welcome down to the mat. We're going to start off by taking a look at the inks individually. The first one here, I'm going to show it being taken out of the box. Now, I will be honest, these have already been out of the box because I've done my swatches and I've inked up some pens for some later testing. But I've put this one back in just so you can see how it comes packaged. So the box here, Dominant Industries, we've got the nice logo. It's a standard ink. This one is Lake, 25 milliliter bottles, and the ink number 115. The box is nice and plain, really. There's various writings. We've got some warnings here. Don't use for any purpose other than specified. Well, yeah. Don't drink. If you drink, rinse with clean water and consult a doctor. When children use the product, please be sure to be with his slash her guardian. Do not expose to direct sunlight, fire or high temperatures. It may deteriorate if stood for a long time after opening. Keep sealed after use. To be honest, common sense, aren't they? So yeah, fairly plain box. So when it came, this here, the label was sealed all the way down. So I sliced it open to get into the box. When I open the box, the first thing that you see is this bag. Just going to lift the bag out. Also in the box, there's a little pipette. So if you're going to be eyedropper in any of your pens, you've got some now spare pipettes if you want to use them. In the bag, on the front, we've got Dominant Industries. It's plain on the back. I think this is nice, isn't it? It it just gives that little bit of this is a quality product feel. Now you can see on the top, I've put my number in, but under there, that's the Dominant Industry logo. And here's the bottle itself. When I got it again, this was one continuous sticker. I had to slice that to get into it. So on, on here, got Dominant Industry. We can see that Gary's messy, but it actually gives you an idea of what the ink colour is. And it's Lake. I like this. I think the bottle's really nice. It looks like at the bottom here we've got a good chunk of glass, so it gives it a very solid base when you're filling your pens. If we look around the cap, standard 25 millilitres, dominant industry as well. So we've got enough on there to know what the ink is. I like this. I think it's a really nice bottle. You may hear that quite a bit though. First thing I did, as I said, I've already done my swatches. Here we are. This is Dominant Industry Lake. I like this colour. This is a nice, vibrant, this is like a greeny blue type colour. And you can see where the name Lake comes from, can't you? Because from my childhood, I can remember going to the Lake District in the UK. And this does really fetch back. That was the colour of the water when you were staring at the lakes. Really nice, really interesting. On the swatch, we might see a little bit of shading. Be interesting to see if that comes out in the writing. I've not written with this yet. We'll look at some writing later on. But yeah, this is a really nice colour. So I went to my current collection of inks and thought, right, what's similar to this? And the ones I came up with, Dimine Marine and Robert Oster Torquay. The dominant industry one, to my eye, seems to have a lot more green in it. It looks nearly teal to me when I compare it against these two other inks. The Torquay, definitely a lot brighter, but some of the paler areas are very similar. Just going to pop this up to the top. There we go, so hopefully we can still see that. The next ink, this one is called Forest. Okay. So I'll fetch in my swatch for Forest. Nice dark green, this. Again, I can see where they get the name Forest. You know, where we look where I've got quite a bit of ink on here. 
you can see when you're walking in through a forest where you've got the light coming down you've got the shade you've got the different shades of green coming out and you've got that dark green then you've got the lighter greens the only thing i think would be nice with this is if there was some kind of maybe a brown shimmer that would look really nice i know it isn't and i know it might be difficult but then you've got the the brown for the ground and the green for the trees still quite nice over on the side here i just do a single pass there and that's why it's that paler color so i'm hoping that approximates more what it looks like when it comes out of the actual nib some comparisons i've got for this i've got sherwood green a lot brighter green diamine aurora borealis a bit more blue but when we see here on the single pass i can see very similar tones diamine delaware green getting a lot closer there aren't we and then i've also got lamy peridot again a bit greener but there's some interesting comparisons there let's pop these away and i'll pop this over on the side with the lake the fourth thing here we go this one is lungo i like the sound of the name of this to me lungo says to me that coffees and that darkness of a black coffee coming through and when we look at the ink it's definitely a nice dark brown not overly dark this is something that i think you'll be able to use quite nicely in even business situations it's dark enough for that but it's not pale enough that it's going to really look odd i keep putting industries when i'm writing the names that's something i need to sort out because it's not industries it's industry if i show you on the box there's the box dominant industry i just can't get my head around the fact that it's called industries we'll look at some comparisons here don't have many real comparisons to this color the ones i did look and thought maybe we've got robert oster aussie brown this is more orangey though and the one which i thought was quite a good match is organic studio cysteine brown the cysteine brown though has got a gold shimmer in it and that's coming out there nicely but when we look at it flat the dark colors and even the light colors are getting quite close so i'll just pop this to one side the final link here we go this one winter wood i like the sound of that because here when i'm recording this we're in the middle of winter so i thought yeah this is this might be a nice one and when we look at it again i can see where the name comes from it's a really nice dark brown color and to me it is it's like looking at a tree where you see the back and where it's all dark especially in the winter months when you haven't got as much light shining down when i'm doing my tests on here as you see on this single swipe it looks so dark that it's nearly black and i think this might be an interesting ink to actually try as a black substitute for some of my note taking it's nice though you can definitely on the lighter parts there you can see where we've got that brown coming through couple of comparisons diamine chocolate brown this got more hints of orange in it than what i see in the winter wood then the other one is diamine winter spice again i think this especially when you see the thicker parts is a closer match the winter spice maybe got a bit more green in it than what we see from the winter wood so just pop that to one side going to turn these over now and i'm hoping we can get these all in the camera at the same time so i did some chromatography i'm still playing around learning how to do chromatography what i do is i draw a line along the bottom and i then suspend this chromatography paper in cold water to just below the line and i'll leave it there for 15 seconds then i put it to one side to let the ink be naturally drawn up as the water moves up the paper so with lake we've got purples we've got greens we've got blues nice complex looking colors in there i've got to be honest all these look quite complex don't they on the chromatography with the forest again we've got that purple at the bottom we've got some yellows there and greens and then the blue you can really see how together they make up that green color with the lungo we've actually got i think they're gray at the bottom 
So I'm wondering if there might be a teeniest bit of water resistance in here. I don't test for water resistance because, well, I don't want to be spilling water on my writing, do I? But I wonder if that is with that grey. I can then see a fairly thin pink line. Then we move into like this peachy colour. As we're going up, that peach colour then turns to a nice pale blue. And then the winter wood, the most complex of the four. Again, we've got that grey at the bottom. The grey seems to get a little bit lighter. And then we go into, I want to call it a dirty purple. Then we've got pink. We've got some orange. We've got some peachy colours. That's giving way to some pale greens. Above the pale green here, I see a pinkish layer again with maybe a little teeny bit of purple. And then we've got a nice, it's a darker blue than in the Lunga, but it's definitely a nice pale blue there. So fairly interesting with how I'm seeing that. I'm now going to swap over the view. I'm going to fetch in my notebook of testing and we'll do some writing to see how these inks perform. So here's my notebook of testing. This is an Oxford B5 notebook and it uses the Oxford optic paper. In the past when I've done my ink testing, I've used a dip pen, but I sometimes wonder if that gives a true representation. So what I've done is I've actually filled four different pens with these inks. We're going to start by looking at the lake. The lake I've put into a diplomat arrow. This has got a broad nib. So the pen, as I said, is a diplomat Error, broad nib. The ink, dominant industry. And this one is lake. Drying times, immediate, 10 seconds, 30 seconds. One minute. Still fairly wet, so I'll go for two minutes and I'll use the line above. After two minutes, that's nice and dry. I'll just write a sentence. that ink it flows well it's a nice smooth nib anyway but we can see quite a bit of shading coming through you know e the k the y the top of the t the top of the s the top of the d if we look at the sentence again we can see some shading coming through on virtually every word i like this color it's nice it's bright it's in your face we'll look at pen number two the pen number two is oranga model five or as I like to call this, it's the big boy. In here, I've got the forest ink. Again, we're talking of a broad nib. So we've got here, Ranga, Model 5, with a broad nib. It's a Ranga nib. The ink, Dominant Industry, Forest. Drying times, immediate, 10 seconds, 30 seconds, one minute. Smudging, but only teeniest bit. So I'm not going to bother now with a two minute test on this one because, you know, we can see after a minute. It's more or less dry. I'm going to write a sentence.
this is a nice dark green ink. I can see why it's called Forest. You know, yes, on the swatch, it looks nice and green, but here you can really see the green coming out and you can see it's the darker greens as if, as I said with the swatch, you're walking through a forest seeing all the, the different greens in the trees and the bushes and the plants. Little bits of shading coming through. Not as much as I was seeing with the lake, but it's green. I love my green inks. I think in this Ranga, I think this is a really nice match. I really do like them together. This might be the ink that I keep just for the Ranga. Not certain, we'll have to see how it goes. So I move the page up. So the next pen, that's a Caveca Sport. Now, you'll be seeing the unboxing for this in a couple of weeks' time because they both came in the same order. But I wanted to use this ink in this pen, so I had to double up slightly. Let's open this up. So in here, we've got a Caveco Sport. It's got a 1.1 stub nib. So a little bit different than the other pens. The ink. Dominant Industry. Lungo. Drying times. Immediate. We've got a bit of green in there from the previous ink. 10 seconds. 30 seconds. One minute. After a minute, that one's nice and dry. Of the three we've looked at so far, I'm just going to move this down ever so slightly. There we are. We can see all three. No, I won't. Do you know, Gary's jumping ahead of himself already. Let's write a sentence. I'm getting so excited because I quite like the look of this ink. go right, now I'll move it down so we can see all three that we've done so far of the three this is by far the one I prefer I'm seeing loads of shading I'm seeing loads of character coming out in this ink yes I know it's a stub nib got to bear that in mind the other two were broads but even so the shading that I see compared to the others is at least double if not three or four times as much the ink to me yes it's a brown but I think I can see like hints of green coming through. It, to me, it's a really nice, I'm going to call it a natural looking brown colour. It's not something which looks like, oh, it's brown for brown's sake. It's something as if you're outside and you saw something brown and you say, wow, yeah, that's it. So like that one. Move the paper up. We've got that final one to go. So the final ink I've put into a Laban 325. This is the Cambridge model. Beautiful pen. But in here, we've got the winter wood. So we've got a Laban 325. Again, this is a broad nib. Dominant. Industry. Winter wood. Immediate. 10 seconds, 30 seconds, one minute, I'm going to do a two minute test on this one. After two minutes that one's nice and dry as well. Let's write our sentence. This to me, it's an interesting colour. I know it's called winter wood, and yes, I can definitely see a lot of brown in there. 
but it's very dark. I think this could quite easily be used as an alternate for a black ink. It'd be interesting to see how this looks if I use it in a fine nib as well. I mean, the broad nib puts down quite a nice wet line. To me, I would describe this as a dirty brown colour. I actually think, and this is based on just from what you see on TV, I've never actually seen this in real life, but I imagine oil as it's coming out of the ground. To me, that's what this reminds me of. As I say, I've only seen it on TV, so I could be well off if I see it in real life, but that's just the impression that it gives to me. You know, it's that dirty brownie type colour. It's interesting though. Again, I do see some shading coming through. Not as much as I was seeing on the Lungo, but there's some there. But even where it's shading, again to me, it's, it's dirty. Let me just move this so we can hopefully see a little bit of all four rings. Let's move down a little bit further. So these are my first impressions of the dominant industry inks. Lake, nice bright colour, like the look of that. I'm going to look at using that when I don't fancy using Diamine Marine, but if I want something maybe with a little bit more of a greeny, watery type colour, like the look of it. Forest, beautiful green colour. Not a lot of shading, but it's a nice dark green. It's another one, as I said, with a winter wood. Might be interesting to see how that goes in a fine or a medium nib. The Lungo, absolutely love this. This of the four by far my favourite. This is the one that really jumps out at me. Love the shading, love the way it looks, love the colour. And then winter wood, nice dark brown ink. Looks like a dirty ink to me. And that's the, the, the one thing I just can't get that off my mind. But it'd be interesting to see, as I say, what this is like in maybe a fine nib. I hope you've enjoyed today's video. Have you got any inks from Dominant Industry? Are there any other ones which when I do future orders it may be worth me picking up. Please drop a comment down below. Let's kickstart the conversation. Please hit the thumbs up button every time you like, every time you comment, just helps with the YouTube algorithm. If you haven't already, please subscribe to my channel so that you can get new videos as I release them. I'll talk to you again soon.